all begins with a girl in Germany. Her name was Annelise Michel. One night her family said she started speaking in voices that were not her own. Not just one, but many. Some claimed she shouted names like Lucifer, Judas, Cain, even Nero. Doctors said it was epilepsy and mental illness. Priests believed it was possession. Her story later inspired the movie The Exorcism of Emily Rose. In the film, six demons fight for control of her body. Viewers are left with a question. Was she sick or was she truly possessed? Movies make it dramatic. Shadows moving. Priests holding a cross to the air. But outside the theater, people like Ed and Lorraine Warren claim they saw this happen in real life. To see if something was wrong outside. And her aunt was standing there, a woman who had been dead for years. A woman who she... They investigated haunted houses, dark cases like Amityville, and many exorcisms. Lorraine said she could feel spirits. Ed believed demons were real. Some trusted them. There's a lot of people. Others called them frauds. Don't believe. Catholics use prayers from the Ritualia Romanum. In Islam, there's Rukia, verses from the Quran. In Hindu villages, rituals with fire and chants are used to remove spirits. Science sees it differently. Doctors point to epilepsy, schizophrenia, or sleep paralysis. They say voices and visions come from the mind, not demons. But here's the conflict. When someone screams in a voice not their own, when they claim to know things they couldn't possibly know, even science struggles to explain everything. And that is where this story pulls us in. Between faith and medicine, between priests and doctors, between the movies we watch, and the real lives that were changed forever. One of the most famous stories comes from the 1970s. A young boy in America was said to be possessed. Strange things happened in his home. Objects moving, voices in the dark. The case became so well known that it inspired the movie The Exorcist. Priests who worked on it later described it as the scariest fight of their lives. The boy survived, but the story spread across the world, shaping how millions imagine possession. Then there were the Warrens again, Ed and Lorraine. They claimed to be part of the case of David Glatzel, a boy who was said to be possessed by multiple demons. After the exorcism, another man, Arne Johnson, someone and said in court, the devil made me do it. It became the first U.S. trial where demonic possession was used as a defense. Some believed it. The court did not. In India, stories of possession are also common. Some villages bring in shamans who perform rituals with fire, water and chants. At the same time, Indian doctors say most of these cases are untreated mental health problems schizophrenia, depression, or trauma. But families choose spiritual answers instead of hospitals. Psychologists explain that when a person believes deeply in spirits, their mind and body can act it out. It's called a psychosomatic reaction. The mind making the body respond to belief. That's why some people show extreme strength, unusual voices, Faith can heal, but belief can also harm. The fight between science and faith gets sharper here. If rituals calm the possessed, is it the demon leaving or the brain responding to belief? And if medicine fails but prayer works, who is right? These are the questions that keep this mystery alive. Hollywood has never let go of these stories. The Conjuring series made the Warrens world famous again, showing scenes of families attacked by shadows, priests performing exorcisms. The exorcism of Emily Rose reminded audiences that behind the drama was a real young woman 
Annalise Michel, who died after 67 exorcisms. Her parents and the priests were even taken to court, accused of neglect because doctors said she needed treatment, not rituals. In interviews, Lorraine Warren often said that demons are real and that their goal is to break faith and destroy lives. Skeptics, however, call her stories exaggerated or completely false. Journalists who investigated cases like Amityville or the Devil Made Me Do It trial found contradictions, missing evidence and claims that could not be proved. Still, the belief in possession only grew stronger with every book, film and headline. Science continued to fight back with research. Neurologists studied brain scans of people who claimed possession and found signs of epilepsy or dissociative identity disorder. Psychologists pointed to something called cultural scripts, meaning people act out what their culture tells them possession looks like. If movies and stories show people screaming in Latin or twisting their bodies, someone who believes they're possessed may unconsciously do the same. And yet, there are moments science can't fully explain. Priests tell of people suddenly speaking languages they never learned. Families describe strength in their loved ones that seems impossible. Doctors sometimes admit that, while they don't believe in demons, they have no medical answer for what they witnessed. This is why the debate never ends. On one side, faith says demons are real and exorcism is proof. On the other, Science says possession is a mirror of the mind, mental illness and belief mixing together. Between them lies the truth people keep searching for. Before we reach the final answer, it's worth hearing what experts themselves have said. Professor Richard Gallagher, a psychiatrist at Columbia University, shocked many in the scientific world when he admitted he believed some cases go beyond mental illness. He wrote about a woman he called Julia, who seemed to know things she couldn't possibly know. Details about strangers' lives. Gallagher said, I've seen patients speak in languages they never studied and show unnatural strength. Exorcisms and, and out. I mean, if that doesn't convince somebody that something is going on, it's hard, hard not to. But other psychologists strongly disagree. Dr. Michael Cunio, who studied dozens of exorcisms for his book American Exorcism, said most cases were people with psychiatric conditions and the rituals often made things worse. He argued that belief in possession can trap people inside their illness instead of setting them free. Even neurologist Vilayanur Ramachandran, known for his brain research, explained that mystical or possession-like states can happen when certain brain circuits misfire, especially in the temporal lobe. In other words, the brain itself can create supernatural seeming experiences without a single demon in the room. This clash is what keeps exorcism such a mystery. One respected professor swears it's real. Another insists it's all in the brain. And caught in between are the families who just want their loved one back. Today, the Catholic Church still performs exorcisms, though it's far less public than before. In Islam, Rukia is used the same way. In Hindu traditions, rituals and mantras are still done in villages. Across religions, the pattern is the same. When science has no answer, people turn to faith. But what does modern science really say? Many psychologists have studied this. There was James Henderson, who in a 1982 paper, Exorcism and Possession in Psychotherapy Practice, argued that possessing demons can be seen in psychological terms. Colleen Ward did a psychoanthropological study titled Spirit Possession and Mental Health, showing that in some cultures, long-term possession claims can reflect deep stress, cultural pressure, social suffering. Researchers often point to dissociative disorders, psychosis, epilepsy, or extreme sleep disruption as medical explanations. A person might hear voices that are not there, see shadows or feel something cold touch them and their brain shows changes in electrical activity or their stress hormones shoot up. In some clinical tests, what looked like possession behavior was triggered by suggestion, culture or even movies. But again, science admits it can't always map every odd case. 
Sometimes there's simply no medical diagnosis that matches what people describe. Most researchers agree that possession is not proof of demons, but of the human mind's power. Disorders like epilepsy, schizophrenia, dissociation, and even extreme stress can make people hear voices, see figures, or act violently. Psychologists have tested people during possession and found changes in brain waves, adrenaline, and muscle strength, showing that belief can unlock states the body usually hides. This doesn't mean it's all fake. What it means is that the human mind is far stronger, stranger, and more mysterious than we think. When a person believes they are possessed, their mind can make it real in their body. And when they believe a ritual will save them, sometimes they really do improve, not because of a demon leaving, but because faith gave them the strength to heal. So, is exorcism real? In one way, yes, because people truly suffer, truly believe, and sometimes truly recover. But science tells us it isn't a battle with invisible demons. It's a battle inside the human brain, shaped by culture, fear, and faith. The true story of exorcism is not about ghosts. It's about us.